Hey guys, how's it going? It's Amanda. I've been using the new MacBook Air. This is the base model and I've really been testing it a lot and haven't shared a whole lot of my thoughts, but I've really been loving it and there's a whole lot I love about it, but I had some kind of crazy strange results that I wanted to share with you. I picked up a new dock from Hyperdrive along with an anchor uh, dongle for it and I'm kind of just gathering up some accessories that I think you guys would like so I can kind of make a best of accessories video. So with my unexpected results, I wanted to share them with you because many of you are gonna be doing just like I was. Do I wanna to pay to get some upgrades? Do I just wanna get the base model? If you're just doing everyday stuff, just get the base model. If you're doing any kind of work on it, you may want to go ahead and upgrade. I just wouldn't pay that $800 for the two terabyte. I would go ahead and do half and half, upgrade internal and then pick up something like an external hard drive. This one right here is only a one terabyte, but if I were to pick up the two terabyte model, you can pick it up on Amazon for $260 nine dollars so I only have this one which is what is this one 149 so it's up to you how much you need but if you're gonna do any kind of stuff where you need to have fast drives definitely watch this video okay so the first test we are going to run is a speed test from black magic design this has been updated for the new m1s and the built-in internal SSDs I'm getting 2167 on right and 2692 on read. I did run these a couple times on almost all of these tests just so that you can see nothing crazy spiked. They're all pretty accurate and relative. Um, this is not super scientific, but I did run this test on battery. I tested it plugged in and as long as I have a full battery, they're pretty close. Now things get crazy, so go ahead and stay tuned. Okay, so also I went ahead and used the same cord for the external SSDs just to make sure there was no variances. This is the WD My Passport. I shared this recently in a budget EDC video, so check that out if you guys are interested. But this comes in at 146.36 right now for the gray and one terabyte, which is what I have here. It says it'll do a speed up to 1050 megabytes per second. One thing that's kind of cool is they have several different colors and I do know that they had told me that they have a four terabyte coming soon. So that's really awesome. That's a lot of storage in an SSD. And the second one I have is this Sabrent Rocket Nano, I believe. This is a little teeny tiny one, the size of like a stick of gum. It's not much bigger than that, but it's really small and very convenient to always have with you. I've had this for quite a while now. It says it will do up to 10 gigabytes per second. And the price is very similar, 149 for a one terabyte, which is the size I have here. Okay, so since this is a MacBook Air, many people are gonna be using these on the go or away from their desk, maybe at the couch or even in bed, coffee shops, things like that. So if you're plugged in your external SSD directly to the USB port and you're trying to use it while you're working on something and you're running off battery power, I am at 100% charge just because I've been doing so much here that I have it fully charged. But this is the test that we are going to do first off and we'll do the My Passport first. It's always first in all these tests, by the way. But looking at the results there, substantially slower. On the right speed, we'll wait for it to go ahead and stop. We're at 6.07 and a read speed of 6.30. Gosh, it's all over the place. 6.31 by the time it stops. Again, you can see I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up, but I'm going to let a couple of these run so you can see that nothing's just crazy random one time. So all I'm doing is ejecting these and switching which one is plugged into the cable. So let's switch it over to the rocket drive and we'll see what the results are like. Again, battery powered, plugged directly in. So we're getting 560, 565 on the right speed. And 560, on the read speed so I will go ahead and let this one play out okay so there we go so moving along if you are using a dongle on your MacBook many of us will because we all need more ports I'm gonna tell you right now do not plug an SSD into it unless you just don't care about time <laughs> but anyways this is one of the latest ones from Anchor. It's only got one review on Amazon. It hasn't been out very long. It should have everything it needs to provide all the speed that you would want. Um, I highly suggest you picking this up. It's been great for everything I've used in it. Just don't plug your SSD into it unless it's a last resort and you're just not worried about time. So plugged in to battery, if you're on the go and you plug your SSD in here, we got the My Passport and you can see it halved 
my speeds. I'm getting 311 on right. Again, my passport on battery, plugged into the dongle. And read, we're getting 290, well, let's call it 294. That is so much slower. So you don't want to plug it into the dongle unless you have no other ports open and it's the only way you can do it. Okay, so we are going to test out the rocket drive, see if it can pull through plugged into this dongle. And nope, still getting speeds that are crazy slower than plugged in direct. We are at 316, we'll call it there. And um, on that, that was on the right speed and the read speed of 300 on this one. So. Again, I'll go ahead and let it play out so that you guys can see that it is, you know, roughly in the same time frame. Okay, now let's test out the hyperdrive, which is plugged into a power mains. It's providing power to your laptop and keeping it charged while it is in use. So let's see what kind of results we get from that. Here's the My Passport speeds. And on the first test, we get still in 300s it's not any better oh wait it's up to 400s okay 440 we'll call that as the right speed and a read speed of 663 but wait the second time around it jumps up this is why i played these two times for you guys um now we're at 701 what the heck like what what just happened the read speed is also much faster it is 678 we'll go ahead and call that so that's very interesting. Again, I'm gonna let it go just one more time because we've had some crazy results here. Again, we're at 745 and a read speed of 676. That was really insane. Um, let's go ahead and switch it over to that little teeny tiny rocket drive and just see what that little baby can do. So here on the right speed, we are at 870, 72. And a read speed. Look at that. The read speed is 919. So 920. Wow. So that's even faster <laughs> than plugged in direct through the hyperdrive on, was it both of these? I'd have to go and check, but that's insanely different. Um, I, I don't even understand how it's that much faster, to be honest, because nothing else has changed other than the hyperdrive being plugged in and there is power to that. Now, you may say, what about all these other tests by using power? And I did test that and I couldn't honestly tell that there was that much difference. So I didn't want to show all these results again and again and again, because it was just going to drag this video out forever. But I let these run again multiple times. So you guys could see that they were very consistent, except for that first one that was slower. I don't really know why. So with those insane results does come cost. This is a $300 dock. It's just not a cheap dock. Now, this is not your basic average dock. You can pick up some cheaper ones. This one does have Thunderbolt 3 Titan Ridge, which means it's backwards compatible. And there's a whole lot of things you're paying for. There is 16 ports and this is the backside where everything plugs in from the back of your computer. And then if you turn it around, all these ports are accessible, SD cards and even your headphone, all that is accessible from the front side. So that is really awesome. But this is something you use only at home. This has this massive power brick and you can hide that all the way under your desk, but this is definitely not something you wanna take and just use at the coffee shop. It is way too big for that. And if you're on the go and you just need some expansion slots, the dongle is definitely the way to go. Just again, do not plug your SSD in there unless you absolutely have to. So from all my tests, upgrading your internal SSD is definitely the way to go if you have the funds. If you do not have the funds, pick up an external SSD and use that extra money to pick up a dongle and or a docking station, which can still give you some really great results and save some money along the way. Just remember, test out the speeds and figure out if you can plug it into your dongles and things like that, because you definitely don't want to be slowing them down any more than you have to. Again, everything's going to be linked down in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.